The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Burkeen. Brought to you by Harvey Autos in Shreveport, Bossier City. The name you've trusted for years. GEICO, the insurance savings you expect. Supreme Chevrolet. Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. Total Car Care. Tire Shop and Automotive Repair in Baton Rouge. Bollinger Shipyards. 75 years of delivering high quality vessels. Here's your host, Lee Burkeen. Hi everyone, I'm Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report Podcast. I'm at Dunham High School in Baton Rouge. If you're not from Baton Rouge, it's a great school, great academics. We're going to be talking to Neil Weiner, the head football coach, four of his top players, uh, seniors, and also we're going to interview the volleyball coach for Dunham. They've got a great program too, and one of their top players, uh, Skylar Russell, intern, is going to do that interview, one of her first interviews, while as an LSU student uh, working with us as an intern. We'll be right back with much more. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back, Lee Burkeen, uh, the Sports Scouting Report podcast. I want to tell everybody, too, if you're watching this show, um, Dunham High School, if you're a fan or an alumnus, uh, we didn't do our print version this year of the Louisiana Football Magazine preview but we did put it online on our website lafootballmagazine.com i did go to a dunham football game recently against baker i always like to go i'm old school i like to go to the games i know a lot of people today uh coach weiner thank you for joining yeah, us thank you for letting us be here today yeah absolutely glad and to have you here sorry for uh, moving your office around a little bit no that's all right and that's actually neil actually helped us with the camera today we're having some camera issues so neil knows cameras not just coaching um Tell everybody how many years you've been at Dunham now. This is my 10th season uh, here Man. at the Dunham School, and uh, time flies. I remember it was like yesterday you were at Zachary. That's right, yeah. Five years at Zachary, great uh, great kids, great coaches to work with. A lot of the same coaches that we uh, that we hired back then are still doing great things yeah. over there, and, yeah. and even better. And then it just seems like yesterday, because I'm old, but it seems like yesterday you were at Catholic High as a football player for your dad. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Some of my best... Uh, Best memories uh, playing football for my dad over at Catholic High and then getting to coach some freshman football for him. And uh, yeah, what a great man. You mind if I write off a bunch of your players? I mean, I'm not going to like, we don't have two hours to go over every kid if your mom or dad watching, but Malachi Jackson will be joining us later in the show. Uh, Como, who's a great player for you, been a great player for three years. Malachi, four years. Oscar Boatner, uh, Houston Terrio, Lewis Phillips, Cole LeBlanc. Uh, Trevor Heyman. If I screw up a name, I know Coach will tell me. You're doing me. great so far. <laughs> Drew Bourgeois, uh, Colin Piku, uh, Jack Higginbottom, uh, Elijah Haven, his star freshman quarterback, Richard Montgomery, uh, Logan Sorrell, William Danton. I know that name from LSU way back. Yeah. Jack House. That's a name I know too. Uh, Joshua Lazard, Connor Guidro, yep. uh, Hopeland Eldridge, mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Baychuk. Baychuk. Um, and Andrew Bardwell, your kicker, Jerome Harris, Riz Johnson, Reeves, Reeves Johnson, Graham Thornton, and Grant Morgan. And I know we're missing probably some guys, but I'm just trying to write off some of your guys. And most of them, Coach, for the people listening, are 27 guys, 26 guys, and 25 guys, meaning the class are they're young. Yeah, we you know last year was the largest senior class that we've had in my ten years of done. This is the smallest senior class that we've had, and so um, yeah, it's small in, in, in quantity, but certainly the quality is there. Um, each one has, has played a huge role uh, in our team's success this year and last year. So, but it is exciting knowing that we do have uh, such a, a big core of players coming back for the next couple of years. When we come back, I want to take a quick break, but I want to talk about your son because I know as a dad. Coaches don't admit it when they coach their own son. You, you're proud. I know he's at Louisiana Tech. Yeah. Uh, get an update on your son there. And then uh, talk about the history of Dunham. Uh, Kerry Koch, Todd Kenshin, Stingley, um, you know, great players uh, over the years. A lot of great players come out of Dunham. Sean Candelosi, uh, back when I first started uh, before the magazine, back in the early uh, 90s. We'll be right back with more Dunham High School and Coach uh, Neil Weiner. Supreme Chevrolet. Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen with the Sports Scouting Report Podcast. Look, 
Be sure to subscribe for free, and we ask any Dunham parent um, or fan, just uh, hit the free, it's free. It's a, I'm not trying to sell anything, it's just a free subscription to help us grow our TV show. Um, we used to be on Cox 4 for 13 years, uh, E-Tail for 13 years. We were on CBS in Lake Charles for nine years. We were in Fox in Monroe for eight years, New Orleans, Lafayette, but now we're doing the YouTube coach and um, here with Coach Neil Weiner at Dunham. I'm in his office where a lot is going on in this office in the mornings. Uh, I was able to meet you outside about seven o'clock or right before seven. Yeah. Um, your son, Coach, I mean, he's at Tech. He played for you. Yeah. Truly, because I never get the right answer from a dad that coaches their son, especially the coach. What was it like coaching your son here? Yeah, no, it was an absolute joy. Uh, the truth is uh, some, of, some of our coaches on the coaching staff helped me to realize and appreciate um, how special it was uh, to coach him and, and what a great player he was for us. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, coaches will be a little bit harder on their kids because uh, they don't want to draw – any extra attention to him and uh, yeah. but the truth is uh, he was one of our best players and uh, his junior year he was actually our offensive MVP our, our coaches uh, convinced me to give him that award I really didn't because I didn't want him to get any kind of um, you know no blowback from that right, right. Uh, but he did a fantastic job and the next year uh, he really had a, a, a big focus on defense as well and that's what he's doing now he's a backup linebacker at okay. Louisiana Tech Okay. Uh, he walked on. I'm really proud of him. That's not an easy thing to do to no, be a college no, athlete, no. Uh, to be a non-scholarship guy and earn your spot. He's the only walk-on player left in his class. All the rest were either cut or they quit, and uh, he stuck with it. So he's gotten to travel with the team in his second year, went up to Lincoln, Nebraska, and okay. done some great things. And He's just a great kid, hard-working kid. He's the kind of guy you want on your team. And look, if you ever want to be a coach one day, being a walk-on and making it through those five years or four years, not saying he's going to be a coach, because yeah. you, you know that. Right. But, um, be an opportunity. It's there if he wants it. Yeah, absolutely. No, he, look, no. Third generation coach, right? He'll be successful in whatever he does. Yeah. If he wants yeah. to be a coach, he'll be a fantastic coach. Because uh, he, he wants to go make it. some real money, he can go to <laughs> yeah. um, Speak about Dunham, and, and you're an AD here, uh, Neil. You're not just a coach. And I was going through, and look, I was watching this man. I mean, he's doing everything. He's on the phone with teachers. He's checking on kids. I mean, he's... I don't know, I don't know uh, concessions, whatever he's doing here, but it's not just coaching, it's teaching, it's full-time job for you 24-7. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I, think, uh, I think I'm doing what I was called to do. Um, I think God put me uh, in this profession. I think I was raised by a great man, a great role model, uh, somebody who did things right, treated people the right way, and also had success on the field. And so... I've tried to emulate that as well, and uh, I really love where I'm at at Dunham. You know, schools are all about uh, fit, yeah. and uh, I think I fit really well with the mission of the Dunham School, and I think uh, the Dunham School really fits well with me. A lot of people don't say this, but I'm going to give him credit. Um, you know, Zachary's been doing phenomenal, but they you were there before all this really took off. I mean, you, you were there when they weren't winning nine, ten games a year when you went over there. Right. And... I know Bob Howe did a good job yeah, before Yeah, absolutely. But it's like Bob Howe, Neil Weiner, did, I think y'all set it up in a good spot for uh, who's doing a good job now, another Catholic grad. Yeah. Coach no, Bur absolutely. Coach Burton's doing a great job. No, I, I love the five years that I was there, and I feel like uh, what we uh, what we did in those five years has helped along the way. Yeah. Uh, but the community of Zachary is what makes it special. Yeah. Um, they had great things in store for them uh, before Coach Howe got there, before I got there, before David Burton got there. Uh, Warren Drake was a visionary yeah. leader uh, for that school system. Uh, he came in and got things done and had a high level of expectations and, and held people accountable, but did it in a way where you believed you could do it. Um, and so I came in with a vision and a blueprint for what I thought uh, could make Zachary uh, top notch. Yeah. And uh, God had other plans for me not to uh, not to be able to see it take place uh, completely while I was there. But it certainly was rewarding seeing all the freshmen and the sophomores um, that I you know had a part in helping lead and uh, transform to see them accomplish winning a state championship when they became seniors was pretty special for me to watch that take place. And uh, David Burton has been a longtime friend of mine. We've worked together. Uh, we've been tight for a while, and uh, I was super excited that he got that opportunity. And to see the level that he's taking it to is just incredible. 
both Catholic high grads in Baton Rouge. Uh, when we come back, I want to ask Coach about what it was like playing a state championship game last year. Uh, it was only the second time in the history of the school at Dunham. They went years ago at Kerry Coke, who was a phenomenal player who went to Tulane, if you remember. And then they had Hurricane Katrina, and then he went to Virginia and had a great career. They went to the CF CFL in the Canadian League and did a good job. And I want to ask him also about the tough district uh, Episcopal and East Feliciana and some of the teams they have to play week in and week out. It's not easy uh, in the district they're in. Uh, we'll be right back. Total Car Care, Tire Shop and Automotive Repair in Baton Rouge. Welcome back, Lee Burkini with the Sports Scout Report Podcast, Louisiana Football Magazine. Uh, be sure again to subscribe for free and also go on our podcast. We're on about 32 different uh, opportunities where you can go wherever you get your podcast. Go on it. And also our website, LAFootballMagazine.com. We're interviewing recruits all over the state. I'm going to be going to Lake Charles for a week. I'm actually going to go to a few playoff games there. I'm going to hit the schools from 1A to 5A, all the way from Jennings, Iowa, all the way to Sulphur. I might even go all the way to Beauregard and Leesville. Uh, so I've got four days of 32 high schools to hit. And uh, we'll have a bunch of shows uh, ready when we come back. But I want to get back to Coach Neil Weiner with Dunham High School, the head football coach. Um, they went to the state championship game last year, a special year. Coach, you mentioned you had a large senior group, a special bunch of guys. We don't have enough time to talk about we're all up and signed. And, yeah. But you had a lot of them go to different schools, different levels. Your quarterback house was special. Yeah. Um, you had some special D linemen that graduated all over the field. But what was, what was 222 like for you personally? Because a lot of times you have that great class – and you don't get to the top of the mountain, you don't make that game, but y'all were able to get to the state championship last year. Yeah, it certainly was rewarding being able to play in a dome, uh, play for a state championship, help Dunham, uh, you know, do something that, that doesn't get done a whole lot. Um, but no, there, there's so many great coaches out there that don't get the opportunity, that the stars don't align. Yeah. Um, you might have the best team that you've ever coached, and it just so happens there's another school that has the same exact thing, and sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. So. There's a lot of great coaches out there that, that haven't been able to either make it to the Dome or, or come home with a state championship. Um, I think hopefully if you have your, your uh, priorities in check, you realize that you know, your job as a coach is to max out you know, every single yeah. day, every practice. Uh, and last year, I felt like regardless of what happened on the field, uh, at, on the scoreboard, I should say, our coaches every single week uh, coached their tails off, had great game plans, and our kids played absolutely their hardest every single week that we played. And as a coach, that's all I can ask for. And uh, I, I kind of surrender the results up to, to what God may have in store for us. And it's my job to do the best I can with what he's given us. And so last year was, it was certainly the most rewarding year that I've had because yeah. uh, we did have such a challenging uh, road to the dome. Um, you know, playing uh, Calvary Baptist, who's extremely yeah, talented. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were up 14 nothing. Our kids didn't blink, and we ended up uh, pulling away and winning uh, by a couple of touchdowns. And then uh, with the LHSA changing the way the playoffs are done, and all of a sudden 3A Power U High, who has been one of the best programs in the city of Baton Rouge and the state of Louisiana the last 10, 15 years, uh, for them to come down to our division – uh, for the playoffs and, and to play them uh, in that atmosphere at home and, and come away with a win against such a, a great team, uh, that was a really special moment for our school and for, for us as coaches. I went to Calvary Baptist this spring, and I'm going to tell you, Coach, I thought that this is their best team ever. And you played those yes. guys as juniors. That's right. Uh, beat them last year. Um, I look back to your dad's career, mm -hmm. and you just mentioned, I just remember something, but your dad coached many years, and I was so happy for him to win a state championship in his final years. Mm -hmm. He had so many teams, yeah. and, and he did such a wonderful job. But that it was not the Warwick Dunn team. It wasn't right. the Major Applewhite team. Yeah. It wasn't the Donnie Jones team. Yeah. wasn't your team when you were nah, certainly but not he, when I was What was it like for you to see your dad win one at the end of his career like that to cap it off? No, it's very, very special to be able to see him do that there towards the end of his career. And, uh, you know, such a great man. I, I think everybody uh, – can get caught in the comparison game and you look and you see, oh, that, that person's got this successful business or yeah. look at that family. They've got, they've, they've got all this and that. So as coaches, uh, we can try to teach our kids not to do those things, but we, yeah. we certainly do. You look at it and you go, well, man, I've been this close. I've never won a championship. Um, 
but my dad was always faithful. He was always consistent. He always wanted to do things the right way. Uh, and when it lined up for him to be able to, to walk through that, um, he did, did it with grace and, uh, did it with humility and, uh, certainly somebody that everybody can look up to. Dale Weiner, if you're not from Baton Rouge, his dad, That's Hall right. of Fame coach. Dale, uh, great job. Appreciate you being uh, really good to me for 31 years of coming to practice and going, oh, there he is again. <laughs> but, uh, Coach, also want to ask you about the history of the school. Todd Kenshin, I grew up watching mm -hmm. in my age group. Um, Sean Candelosi, you said, came out in 96. Yep. He was a heck of a receiver here, um, played at Tech. Yeah. Um, and then you had Stingley. Yeah. He's with the Texans. And now you have, I want to get to this guy. He's just a freshman, but I was able to watch Elijah Haven, your quarterback. And, you know, you hear things and you go, yeah, this, this kid's talented, yada, yada, whatever. And I just want to go to a game. I didn't want to go to, like, the U-High game. I just wanted to go to any game. I mm -hmm. saw your Baker game. Yeah. And I knew y'all had more talent. I knew it might be one-sided, possibly. Right. But I was watching him. And in 31 years, outside of our, uh, Peyton Manning and Doug Williams, I've never seen a freshman quarterback from Baton Rouge or New Orleans that stood six foot five, looked like a senior, threw the ball calmly like a college quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he's just how old? He just turned fifteen about two weeks ago. So now he's very he's very unique, very special. Um, he's a great young man. You know, he's an, an honor student, four point uh, His his own classmates at school voted him as the Godly Character Award. Um, he's a leader. I think one of the things that helps Elijah and, and, and parents, if you're listening out there, Elijah plays multiple sports. He's an exceptional basketball player as well. I think um, his ability to play basketball, uh, to move the ball up and down the court, helps him on the football field. You know, everything's moving fast. It's tighter spaces. And so as a quarterback, you're in the pocket. Everything's moving fast. It's tighter spaces. Yeah. And he's able to do that. But also the toughness that you have to have in football, the physicality that comes to it, makes him more confident, more aggressive on the basketball court. Um, he is, he's, he's an exceptional talent. Um, the, the, statistically, the game that he had against Parkview in the very first game of the season was the best that I've ever seen in person for a high school quarterback. Um, but the statistics weren't the most impressive thing. It's right. what you talk, it's, right. the, it's the poise, it's the composure, it's the maturity. Uh, he doesn't force the ball. Uh, the only time that I've seen him force a pass that he shouldn't have thrown, um, he, he did it because he wanted a receiver to get his first touchdown. Mm. So he was doing everything he could to get him the ball mm. and uh, ended up being an incompletion. It wasn't an interception. But uh, but you love the team. But what a, what a mindset, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, we got a possession receiver this year who's, who hadn't scored a touchdown yet, but he's, he's third on the team in receptions, and he wanted him to score a touchdown. Mm. So what, just what a great attitude to have, and uh, he is a team first guy. And, and you've been through this before. You had the number one recruit in the country in Stingley. Yeah. So you've been through the freshman phenoms like that. You had a generational corner. Yeah. Now you got a generational quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, what's different about uh, Derek and Eliza, uh, Derek from a skill standpoint uh, was the best that I ever had from an athletic standpoint and his ability to do things. But physically, as a ninth grader, you wouldn't have projected him physically to right. be the the man child he turned into be. You but know, this guy's already he yeah. already has that physical stature that right. makes you automatically have your eyes turned to him. With Derek, you would watch the game, you put on the tape, and you say, "Who's this little guy, twenty four? You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, with Elijah, you're immediately going, "I want to see what that guy does." So Derek had all that within him. He just needed to be physically more mature before yeah. he just completely dominated the competition. Yeah, when I came to practice and saw um, Coach Weiner, it was his freshman year, and you had Micah Tung over here. He had all kind of guys oh, yeah. at that yeah. same. And I was like, who's that 160-pound 5'11 yeah, kid? that's right. Like I said, he wasn't 190 or 180. That's right. Grew into that. Coach, before we go, not we got one minute left. Malachi Jackson's going to join us. Yeah. Tell me about him and Como and Lewis Phillips and Bourgeois, your thoughts on those four guys. Yeah, four uh, dynamic game-changing players for us within our program. Uh, Malachi has been a four-year starter. Uh, you know, even as a freshman, he was uh, making life miserable on the offensive lineman. Uh, didn't matter if we were playing St. Charles Catholic or Calvary Baptist or U-High. He was 6'2 as a freshman. Yeah, he yeah, yeah he hasn't grown much uh, vertically. He's yeah. put on some weight, though, and uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a dynamic force. Lewis Phillips is one of the toughest kids 
Uh, I've coached just deals with whatever kind of adversity. He's got broken fingers, you know, dislocated mm -hmm. knees, swollen ankles. Uh, it never stops him from going 100 miles an hour. Uh, Jack Como has been the most explosive uh, receiver we've had statistically since I've been here. He's averaged almost 30 yards a catch for two years now. Uh, just incredible ability to blow the top off the coverage. Um, and then Drew Bourgeois is just, uh, he's just an all around ball player. Uh, you know, last week, uh, opening kickoff return for a touchdown, then he had to pick six for a touchdown. Uh, he had four touchdowns uh, receiving the week before. Uh, before that, he had, he had one rushing, had one receiving. So he's, he scored just about every way possible. Uh, and he's just an absolute dynamic playmaker for us. I don't know if your coach, Lon Decker, would agree with me who went to Parkview, um, but uh, Jack Como reminds me of Drew Dillio. Yeah, like, a lot of similarities. A little, little, little taller. Yeah, a little, taller. A, little, a little bit taller than uh, Drew, and then Drew was a little bit uh, – Drew was just so incredible right. just with the ball in his hands. He, you could give it to him in the backfield. You could swing it to him out, out, out on a pass, uh, kick returns, pump returns. Um, and so they're a little bit different, but um, not very big, but just explosive and can score every time he gets it. Thank you for joining us, Neil. Thank you, Lee. Coach Weiner, Dunham, uh, we're, we're going to interview the volleyball coach. Actually, Scholar Russell is going to do it. Her first interview, she's a college intern, works with us, goes to LSU, and um, – She's going to do her first interview with the head volleyball coach at Dunham High School. She's going to introduce the coach and also interview the, uh, the player, her top player. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Hi, everyone. Lee Burkeen out with Scholar Russell. Did a great interview with the volleyball coach at, here at Dunham High School. Uh, they're state champions from last year. Big time program. Uh, they got some great volleyball in Baton Rouge. St. Joseph's Academy has been great. They've been really good. I know U High is good, Parkview, and in the state. Uh, but we're going to get back to football. Um, we got a great kid that's going to be interviewed. He's a senior, class of 224. He's committed to Georgetown. Uh, college in Washington, D.C., one of the great academic institutions in, in the uh, country. And I think he's one of the top slot receivers in the state that people don't talk about. We talk about him. I had him on a preview magazine, which you can check out on LAFootballMagazine.com. But Jack Como, nice to see you. Sir. Uh, it, it's spelled J-A-C, right? Yes, sir. So I want to make sure I didn't screw it up for him, <laughs> right? But... How's it, how's it going here at Dunham as a senior? What, how's the season? We don't want to talk about certain games because when this airs, it might be a week or two, but how do you, how do you like the season so far? I mean, um, you know, as I uh, would like to say, I mean, I've been here all my life. Um, so I've kind of, you know, grown up, seeing all these high school people play and graduate. So, I mean, being a senior, I mean, it finally feels like I get to be the role that like, I've always strived and seen to be. Um, the season's been pretty good, actually, so far. We're 8-2 uh, and two right now. Um, you know, as last year we went to the Superdome, we were um, we only had a one-loss season. This year we have two, so pretty much we're in a very similar spot. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited for the playoffs, to be honest, because we prepared really good in the summer, prepared uh, really good during the season, so I'm excited. This show might be aired when the playoffs start, so keep that in mind, listeners, if there's already a playoff game played. But, um, Jack, your grandfather I've known for the last five, six years went to uh, school in Lockport, uh, excuse me, not Lockport, but Cutoff, Louisiana, which is now South Lafouche High School. I think it was uh, it was a different name back then, but he was a phenomenal football player, your grandfather, and went to Louisiana Tech and played for the Chicago Bears. I didn't even know that. He didn't even tell me that. But you've got a lot of history in your family. Your dad played at LSU. Yes, sir. And then someone else played, you told me? Uh, yeah, my uncle played at Northwestern State, so... Um, all my middle school years, my dad just, he played basketball at LSU, but my uncle and grandpa played football. So my dad always in, uh, wanted me to play college basketball, but I never really grew to be, you know, 6'2", six, 6'3", six six plus. So yeah. he kind of just like, give football a shot. So I tried playing football my eighth grade year, and then I just took off from there. This kick is phenomenal when you catches the ball down the field or in a slot. I think he's big time. I think you're D1. I know you're going to Georgetown. They're getting a steal, I think. But when you catch the ball, I mean, nobody's catching you. I mean, you just – you can – you got that football speed, that smooth, like, I'm, you know, 40 yards out, I'm going to score. I've never seen you caught from behind. I mean, <laughs> what is it about you and getting to the end zone when you catch a, 
a post route or I mean it's like it's over. I kind of just like all my um on my middle school and even lower school years like when I was young like all I really did was like I was one of the smaller people so all I did was speed training so like I was really fast and when I played baseball when I played basketball but like the speed really wasn't like that big of a factor in those kind of sports so my dad was like maybe just try out football so when I tried out football it was kind of like that was how I separated myself from everybody else because now I'm getting to the point to where like I'm starting to get a little bit bigger and put on weight and things like that. Yeah. But like the reason that I played so early as a sophomore and um, junior and obviously senior and things like that is because of my speed that separated myself. One of the best playmakers in the state, I think. Um, Jack, you were key last year when the Owens is Superdome, played in the state championship game. You were key this year with a young team. Um, to everybody right now, what are you, almost 5'11", I would think, right now? Yeah. 170? I'm 165, 160. But I would think, and I'm just going to say this, you look like you run a 4540 at least, yeah, right? Yes, sir. Is that your 40 time? Yeah, I run a 448. I believe it. I mean, you're you're the, you're a big-time player. Speaking of Georgetown, tell us how that came about. I mean, schools recruit kids in the spring, and this kind of came on a little bit earlier. Um, what made you go to Georgetown? When did you visit? What was that like for you? So... I mean, I had um, I had a bunch of schools in Louisiana recruiting me. Basically, all of them besides like LSU and um, ULM. But I, you know, I was talking to Tulane, McNeese, Nichols, like all those schools. So um, I was getting recruited by a lot of them and UL, and they were all talking to me, but nobody really made a decision yet. So this is during the spring. So um, I made a highlight tape from all my uh, film from junior season, and I sent it to like 400 coaches or 500 coaches, and I got like. 10 or 15 responses and Georgetown was one of them and so I told my dad about it because my dad's a doctor so he was like if you're gonna be a doctor like me you need to take in that seriously and um, talk to them a lot so they were really keen on me they were one of the top schools that um was really talking to me a lot so I was okay. like coach what I need to do to get a scholarship what I need to do to get an offer or a chance to even play over here and he was like you need to come up to Georgetown come to the camp and we believe you're so fast and I are how you are, but we need to see you doing it in person. So I, I took a flight up there. I went to Georgetown for a day before the camp. You know, I viewed the campus and stuff, and it was amazing. I loved it, like you said, little small cities. I went to all the little food places, went to, saw like the little tombs, uh, restaurant bar, like that. And the next day I went to the camp, and I mean, I, it was the best camp I've ever had. I couldn't have performed better, so they gave me a chance to play over there, and that's how that unfolded. I'm happy for you because that's a, not a lot of people get a Georgetown opportunity. I mean, that's the closest thing to Ivy League you can get, and uh, it's a great college, man, like your dad said. And Georgetown basketball is famous, and football's really good. Um, anything you want to do at the end of the interview? Any shout-out to anybody for where you are today? Anybody you want to thank? Um, yeah, I want to thank my grandpa, like you said. He comes every single game. Mention uh, his name. Mention his name. His name's Lynn Pierce. I want to thank him for doing everything for me. He comes every single one of my games. He's been there all my life. He's come to all my middle school things like that. You know, he's helped me with football. I want to thank my dad um, because my dad is what enlisted uh, my work ethic and he put everything into me. He spent a lot of his life, a lot of his money especially, um, and he still does to this day, so I appreciate them too. And I want to thank my, uh, I want to thank my brother and I want to thank uh, Coach Owens for helping me get to Georgetown. And I want to thank my brother because my brother's just trying to play football just like me and I appreciate him for being inside of me. It's like a built-in best friend, so yeah, that's all I got. And Jack did it the right way. You always send your highlight tape out to at least 500 colleges. <laughs> we sent it to 2,000. For real? We help kids. So you did it the right way. Not even knowing. I mean, that's the way you do it. You, you get five or six, Yeah. and you you got a good one. Yeah. Congratulations. Good for luck sure. to the rest of the year. Uh, Jack Como, uh, senior receiver slash slash. To play DB at Georgetown if they need him to. <laughs> yes, sir. But he's a playmaker. I'd rather have him on the offensive side so he can get the ball in his hands. 5'11", almost 170. I'm sure they'll have him at 180 pounds in about a year. Oh, yeah. And uh, who knows? It might get a little trial for basketball. Like, you <laughs> never know. You never know. Uh, good luck to uh, Jack Come We're going to meet one of his teammates. We've got three more to interview. We'll be right back. Supreme Chevrolet. Expect more from Supreme Automotive Group and Gonzalez. Welcome back. We're at Dunham. Uh, if you hear a little bit, we're, we're right by the weight room, which is pretty cool but in a way it's it's getting loud because yeah. you know people weight lift with music now you know <laughs> when I was in high school back in the like the rock ages um, we didn't have music but I wish we did have music back in the day Drew Bourgeois 
Good to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Another senior at Dunham. Yes, sir. Uh, a small group, but we got yeah. all the guys to mm -hmm. the interview. You are both sides of the ball as well. Yes, sir. You're an offensive guy, defensive guy, receiver, DB. Mm -hmm. I also want to tell people you're a baseball player. Yes, Third baseman, you told me, and center fielder. Mm -hmm. um, we'll start with football. And I ask every player this. You're a mm -hmm. senior. What was it like going to the state championship game in 22? Oh, uh, dude, it was it was once in a lifetime experience for sure. It yeah. was amazing just walking in, even just like seeing all the fans there and everything. It's just it was it was crazy. And then just walking out of that tunnel, which like so with the group that we had last year, it was a very good group. We were all really close and everything. So like knowing it was there last time and it was in that big of a game, yeah. it was a pretty cool situation. I didn't ask this to the other kids, but tell me what the scenario was like. So the championship game. Did y'all go up the night before? Did y'all drive up the day of? How did so, that work out? In the morning, so we had a little bit of an early morning, but we had some like charter buses here. So we got up earlier in the morning, came here, and then went and ate at some restaurant downtown. But it, it was really good. So. Okay. And when did you start getting nervous for a game like Well, so before we actually like went in the locker room and got ready, we went and watched, I think, it was the game before us. I think it was LCA and St. Thomas More. Sat in the stands. Yeah, and... sat in the stands and just watched. And that's when it kind of like set in, set like in. that's going to be us like next. We're, we're coming up. Yeah. So that's kind of when it set in, the nerves kind of. And, and people don't realize what it's like. I mean, I, I played high school ball, mm -hmm. and there's that psych of running out on the field and your home fans, that's mm -hmm. like shut. But running out of the dome. Yeah, it's, it's, and it feels it's different for sure. It's it's a lot. There's a lot to take in, but I'm really happy that we, we had the opportunity to do that. So you're back this year. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all got a great offensive line still. Mm -hmm. Young guys, but y'all have uh, Lewis back, Malachi yeah, back. Mm -hmm. Got a great young quarterback, mm -hmm. yeah. Elijah. And what's it like to play on this team with a lot of young guys, a lot of talented young guys? You know, it's it's kind of I can't, I tell I talk to my parents about this. Like I wish I could even with Elijah, I wish I could stay one more Two year, more years. <laughs> a couple more years, just to like play under him. Right. But just knowing like knowing that it's it's a really young team but they're still talented like yeah. today but like knowing like in the future that they're going to be pretty set and going to be pretty good it's it's a good feeling for sure anybody in your family play sports my dad he uh he played baseball he played uh in college at southeastern a little bit okay but he was pretty good he, yeah i don't tell him i said that but yeah he's pretty he's good gonna see the show problem. Problem. Uh, who's the who's a better uh, baseball player you think? oh me for sure dad for sure. you heard that for sure um and what is it like to go to Dunham? Dunham's a great academic school. It's not just sports. Yeah, it, it's I love it. You know, it's a it's a smaller school, yeah. but you kind of get to know everybody a little bit more and kind of interact with. You see everyone every day, and then especially like with teachers, if you're confused or something like that with something in class, you can actually like have a a one on one talk with them. So I really enjoy it. Drew Bourgeois, uh, what do you think you're majoring in college? Uh, Maybe architecture. Okay. I, I, I like that a lot. So maybe do something with that. And uh, as far as pro football, were you a college football guy as a high school kid or a pro football kid when you're not doing high school football? Um, or, do you, or are you just high school football? Well, I mean, I don't know. Do you I watch any of the college? I do. I do. Football? I would love to play like in college or whatever but yeah, it, yeah. it kind of just depends like with baseball as right, well right because if i do go somewhere bigger i don't think i'll be able to do both right just because right. it takes time out of the other one but if i go somewhere smaller i'll for sure probably do both speaking of baseball before we go mm -hmm. um what's the baseball talent like in baton rouge this year you think in your district with episcopal mm -hmm. east feliciana um a lot of good teams in the district and then y'all play a tough non-district schedule in baseball yeah we do have a very tough schedule you know the talent, I feel like recently it's just been getting better and better. They've just had like a lot more, especially like in our class, I feel like we have a lot of guys. Like it's a very, from pitchers to catchers to like, we just have everything. But I, I think it's going to be a really good year for us, for sure. We're going to be playing a lot of talent though, so. It's crazy because Episcopals and Dunham's had some guys go to LSU. Mm -hmm. I think Ole Miss Ole has Miss, kids Luke from, Hill. yeah, Luke Hill left mm -hmm. Arizona State. Yep. I watched him. Y'all had some battles when he was there. Yeah, we did. He had like 20 home runs in one year. It's yeah, crazy. He had a good year. Um, but people don't realize that there's a lot of guys in 2A and 1A mm -hmm. that can throw 90 miles an hour. Yeah, it's it's that you have to hit them. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I have right. to go up and face them. It's it's a it's really just the size of the school. I think like we have guys that can go play at 5A things like that. Like yeah. it's just kind of like size of the school. Like I said, Drew Bourgeois is 5'8", 160, plays like he's six foot two hundred. 
Um, any final thoughts to shout out to anybody for where you are today? Um, well, first, my parents for sure. Without them being there, I don't think I'd, none of this would be, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. But uh, my grandpa, he's never missed a game ever. Tell so, his name. Tell his name. Andy Bourgeois. There you go. Never missed a game ever. So, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know how he does it. That's that's love. Yeah, that's for commitment. sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of good grandfathers at the school. Oh, yeah. I yeah. ran into like ten of them at the fence at the Baker game, mm -hmm. and uh, okay, it's really all, good to see. It's good out. to see that. Mm -hmm. um, appreciate you. Good luck to you, man. Thank you, man. And hope I see you playing college baseball or football somewhere in the end. Don't go anywhere. Yes, sir. We'll be right back. I think we've got Malachi. He's yeah, our Malachi. last interview, who's one of the best players on the team. He's been a four-year starter, O-line, D-line. He'll be playing college ball somewhere. We're going to meet Malachi when we come back. Total Car Care, Tire Shop and Automotive Repair in Baton Rouge. Welcome back. You just got a chance to see Jack Como, the star receiver here at Dunham. And look, he can't make big plays if he doesn't have good linemen. And the next guest is one of the top linemen in Baton Rouge uh, for the last almost four years been playing for Dunham High School as an O-lineman, D-lineman. Lewis Phillips, thank you for joining us. Another senior. Um, yes. I told you the other day when I went to the game against Baker from last year, you look like you're about 250. I mean, you just you carry your weight good, but you told me you're around 230, 235. Yes, sir. 6'4", right? Yes, sir. And you could gain another 50 pounds easy. Yes, yes sir. That's what the coach has been telling me. Um, you told me before we started that Arkansas Monticello has offered you. Yes. And you're talking to some Nichols State in, that, in Louisiana. Yes. Uh, Harvard on the Bayou and Thibodeau. <laughs> um, have you been to any college games to any schools? Um, I've gone a few visits to Nichols and Delta State, and Mississippi. I always ask kids this. Did your dad play college ball? Yes, sir. He played at Nichols. Oh, there's the connection. Yes, sir. Was he a lineman? Yes, sir. Uh, offensive tackle. Man, y'all marry each other, huh? Well, who's bigger right now? Uh, my dad. Your he's, dad's bigger than you? Yes, yeah, sir. But y'all the same height? He's a little bit taller than me. He's taller than you? Yeah. You're 6'4". Yes, sir. He's about 6'5". Wow. So you might get another inch. Hopefully. Did your mom play sports? Uh, no, sir. She's 5'3". <laughs> She's 5'3". You're 6'4". Your dad's 6'5". Yes, sir. Wow. So tell me about what it's like playing for Neil Weiner at, at Dunham High School. Um, I love it. I mean, I came, I haven't been at Donald my whole life, and I talked to Coach Weiner before I came here, and I like Coach Weiner a lot, and I've liked it a lot. The last four years, learned a bunch from all the coaches, really. State championship game was pretty fun for you? Yes, sir. It was last year? Yes, sir. You played O line, D line last year, too, huh? Yes, sir. What I is said a little bit of uh, linebacker. Yeah, last I remember year. that. You were um, probably, what, 210, 215? About 220. 220. Um, what is it like playing the whole game, Lewis? You play O line, D line. You don't get any rest, and some special teams. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, um, it's fun. I mean, I I love it. I like it better than just playing one way. It's you never stop. It's you have to be in shape for it, but it's a lot of fun. Good feet keeps you uh, very active. Did you play any basketball or anything to have good feet like you have as uh, a lineman? No, sir. Uh, just maybe baseball and football. What position in baseball? Pitch. Uh, I think I talked to your dad a year ago, and he was talking about your baseball future, too. Yes. How fast can you throw a uh, fastball? Uh, I'm up to 90. You're 90 miles an hour? Yes, sir. That's pretty good. 6'4", <laughs> 230. Um, now, how many pitches can you throw? Uh, fastball, curveball, two. And who's your favorite college baseball team? LSU. <laughs> That's right a dumb door. question, right? Yes. Um, so... Tell me this, what is it like blocking for that freshman quarterback, Elijah Haven? It's crazy. I mean, before the he's year started. You. Yeah, I mean, it's standing next to him. I have to look up to him. It's weird. Um, but it's it's crazy. I mean, going in the year, I don't really know what to expect. But he's got the poise of a senior, but he's you know, 15 years old. You tend to forget that sometimes, huh? Yes, sir. Because you're, what, 17, 18 years old. Yes. You've been through the battles. Here comes this freshman 6'5 quarterback, and you forget he's only what started what eight games, yeah. nine games. Yeah, you don't you don't see it in the way he plays. It's unbelievable. Um, what do you think of this young team, Lewis, compared to the twenty two team? Y'all lost a lot of guys. We lost a lot of guys, but a lot of our core. I mean, a lot of core guys that played last year are still here. My whole 
we have a small senior class, but all of us played, yeah. started, played a lot, a lot of downs. So before we finish the interview, tell me if it was up to you. If you don't get an offer and it's just a walk-on offer, would you go to Nichols where your dad went, or would you consider going to a bigger school if they gave you preferred? Where, where are you right now in your I definitely thinking? considered going. I mean, I love football. I love the game. Um, and then baseball. What do you think of the baseball football thing? I'm not sure yet, um, but so, I like both. I like them a lot. Um, so if you did, if you got a D1 baseball offer, would that trump a one double A football offer? I don't know. Until we'll you see what that happens. Yes. Yeah, so. um, you got a baseball school you like besides LSU, um, college wise? Not necessarily. I mean, they're the one. Yes, yeah, sir. Can you you think LSU can win it again this year? They should. Isn't it crazy that they have 14 pitchers throwing over 94 miles an hour? Yeah, it's unheard that, of. It's th that are crazy. returning. Yes. Uh, Hurd is throwing 97 now. Uh, Jaden Newt, who sat, sat out last year, is going to be throwing 98. Yes. Chase Shores, he'll be back for the SEC's tournament, throws 100. Yeah. Then they got this Johnson kid from Maryland that throws 100. Yes, yeah, a bunch of the young kids are throwing. And they're not even starting. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's what I hope. So, any shout out to anybody at the, uh, that you want to thank for where you are today? Um, um, Lewis? Some coaches and previous coaches from last year and this year just helping me grow and develop and you know, switching from linebacker to D line and vice versa. It's a lot. And my dad for helping me through that too. Good luck to you, Lewis Phillips. He's a tough kid, by the way. He's not just a big kid, he actually will get after you. And I, I really enjoy watching him play, he's stronger, he's bigger, and whoever signs this kid's gonna get a sleeper because he's he's gonna weigh 270 easily. You only need another year in the college weight room. And um, he's 230 now, looks about 250, good weight. 6'4", legit 6'4". Lewis, good luck to you. Thank you. Good to meet you. And don't go anywhere yet, we're gonna come back. We're gonna have another player interviewed. It will be the Malachi Jackson or Drew Bourgeois, two great players that are left that we're gonna interview. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back to Louisiana Football Magazine. Be sure to go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com, the Sports Scouting Report podcast. We're at Dunham High School. Our last interview is one of the best players in the city of Baton Rouge, I think, for football, Malachi. Uh, Jackson is a four-year starter, O-line, D-line, 6'2", 265. Malachi, I remember when you were 6'2", 200 pounds. Yes, sir. You were starting. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You were, yeah, I was, I was around there my freshman year. Starting on O-line and D-line. Yeah. Well, I started playing offensive line my sophomore year. I was just playing defensive line. I played a little bit of tight end, but I started tight end. Number 77, right? Yes, sir. Well, it was 80 my freshman 80, year. 80, yeah. And then we switched to 77. What was it like starting as a freshman in high school varsity? It was scary. I didn't know what I was doing. So I, just, I tried my best to learn from the seniors that we had and try to get better at it. And you move well. 6'2", mm -hmm. now you're almost 270. Yes, sir. Tell everybody how the recruiting is going for you, and are, are you committed? Are you looking at anybody right now? Uh, I'm looking at college. No college have talked to me yet. Uh, I apply. I have already applied to some schools like uh, South Reason, LSU, Nichols, okay. Louisiana Tech, and all that, but I hope some schools actually look at me. Now, I noticed the last game at Baker, <clears throat> the game I went to, you got a former teammate that walked on at LSU alignment. Oh, Brady. Brady Gustus. And he was at the game. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. You know, it speaks volumes for him to come back and watch his former teammates. He loves coming to the football game. Had his LSU shirt on. Yes, sir. And he's an O-lineman at LSU right now or D-lineman? He's an O-lineman right now. Yeah, I think he might could play one day. What do you think? <laughs> I, I hope so. He's I good. Know. Good player. I really want to is he play. trying to recruit you over there? Uh, yeah, he is. I'm, I might go to LSU. It might. Go to... Well, now, look, a walk-ons get NIL money now mm -hmm. if you don't get an offer. So it's like, it's changed, huh? Yeah, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. What do you like most about football? Uh, the hidden. I like hitting. Toughness. Right hitting. Yeah, we're going against a lot uh, of big I, people. I tell you what, I don't want to go against you, man. Because <laughs> you're, you're put together. You're not, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you carry your weight. There's yeah. no fat on your frame. Yeah. And you and Lewis, I mean, y'all were very athletic. Y'all yeah, have to play the whole game. Yeah, Lewis is a good player. He, he, he has a hurt angle, but he still plays through plays it. Plays through He's still it. one of the toughest players on the team. What have you learned about sports in Dunham, you're four years almost over. Mm -hmm. What uh, have you learned? Uh, brother, family, 
having good teammates, uh, picking your teammates when they're feeling down after you lose a game. And then we got we got a lot of good young guys like freshmen. Okay. We got a sophomore named Trevor Hammond. He's one of our, he's a good player. Yeah, I got him on my list. Um, uh, we got Colin Piku. He's also he's a, good a sophomore. Player. He's a good player. I can tell Trevor's going to be a big kid. He's going to yeah. be a good player. And we got a freshman. He's our quarterback, Elijah Haven. Elijah's he's, good, he's man. He's good. Really good. Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all got some young receivers, young DBs, uh, a lot mm, of young linemen. Tyler uh, Sorrell, he's one of our wide receivers. Are you going to be a coach one day? <laughs> I don't know. You Maybe. should. You, you sound like you're ready to go coach, man. You're in high school. Yeah. Um, if it was up to you, what school would you go to tomorrow if it was for college? Not just sports, just college. For college? If it was a, if it, if it was up to you. Ohio State. Ohio State Buckeyes, huh? Big Ohio State fan. Do y'all have any ties to Ohio? Mm, nah. Is your family from here? No, they're from uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Really? Yeah. Well, how old were, were you when you moved here? I, I'm from Baton Rouge. Okay, I'm, you were raised here. Yeah. Did your dad play ball in, in Jacksonville? Uh, me? Yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. He did. My nanny, uh, my godmother, she uh, she raised me right now. She played basketball. She played almost every sport. Come on. She played a lot of basketball, softball. Tall, tall? Your mm -hmm. grandma? My godmother. Mm -mm. Wow. wow. So you, you, you've you really come a long way, man. Yeah. From Jacksonville all the way to Baton Rouge. Mm-hmm. And Dunham High School. And you've been here since what grade? Uh, so freshman. Freshman. Freshman year. Freshman year. As soon as you got here, you started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was scared the one first year coming here because they had a lot of big guys. I'm sure a lot of people were scared of you too, though. <laughs> Those guys, 5'8", 190 on mm -hmm. D-line. Um, before we go, Malachi, talk about what's important to you major-wise, school-wise. Because, I mean, you had a good school here. Mm -hmm. When you go to college, what do you expect to see on a visit that's going <clears> to impress <throat> you? Uh, the teachers. Uh, so yeah, I want to go to a, I want to go to a, not a, a big college, but it's big enough. Like the classes are small. I so got like, you. Cause I don't like big classes because I can't really focus. Kind of like, like kind of like Dunham. yeah, like Dunham. We have smaller classes, so it's easier to focus. There's not a lot of people in the class that like will distract you, and I'm looking for stuff like that. There's a lot. There's a few of those schools like that. Yeah. Well, you need to y'all need to recruit Malachi Jackson because I'm gonna tell you, the guy can play. He moves really well. From a scouting standpoint, I think you're D1. By the way, thank you. Uh, six two two sixty five carries it really good, and I'm guessing you can run five flat or under because you look that way. Well, if you don't, you look four, that five. way. You run a four five. Well, last time I ran it was four eight. But four eight mm -hmm. at two sixty five. Man, come on. Yeah, there was That's... a game. I think it was my sophomore year where okay. a wide receiver got loose and I had to chase him from the other side of the field all the way down. You I can run. Him. And I'll say this: if you didn't do this for the team. Which I'm glad you do. If you only play one side of the ball, mm -hmm. it would even be different because you you play the <clears> whole game, and people don't realize that when you're an alignment has to get no off reps. This year they got me a lot in a lot of places. O line, D line, H back, tight end, everywhere. Got, got me blocking. Catch a little pass maybe yeah. for the years up. Mm -hmm. Malachi, good luck to you. And uh, do you want to do a shout out at the end? Anybody you want to thank for where you are today? I want to thank my mother, my godmother. They really helped me. They really pushed me to be the man that I am. They taught me to be respectful to other people, women, men, people that are older than me. And I also want to thank my coaches who, when I came in my freshman year, they started me, even though I didn't know what I was doing, but they helped me become as strong and as good as I am as football now. We got to get you back to class. <laughs> I know we ran over a little bit. I'm sorry about that. But hey, good to meet you, man. You too. Thank you. Malachi Jackson. Hope everybody enjoyed the show, and uh, we'll see you really soon. Thanks for watching the Sports Scouting Report with Libra King.